Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today and before we get into the video that I was kind of thinking about, just a topic that I've noticed a few questions on, I wanted to thank you guys because I reached 95,000 subscribers this morning. That's really freaking close to 100,000 and that's like a big milestone in in YouTube. I mean, to some not, but to me that's like, that's just insane. Um, some of you are patients just looking for, you know, someone to commiserate with. Some of you have never dealt with anything medical in your life and you're just curious. And I, I thank both of you and everybody in between. So um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that, but oh my gosh, 95,000 people said, let me subscribe to this random person on the internet. Wild. Anyways, yes, I wanted to let you guys know too that I did get some rest this week. It was a crazy weekend. I wish I could have logged a little bit better, done a little bit more talking while we were actually at the different stuff, but... Um, it just didn't work out that way. I was I was having fun in the moment, but uh, you saw I got some clips. This weekend we're doing something fun, but it's just Zach and I, and it's gonna be a lot more relaxed, and I'm really looking forward to it. We're gonna be in New York City, um, so I'm gonna share that with you. I am deeming this the summer of fun. I feel like there's a lot of activity going on. I also just found out that I will be going to Chicago in a few weeks, just for like 24 hours, um, because I'll be, helping uh, in an exhibit hall for a company. So that'll be fun. It's the same trip that I took last summer. I think it was last July as well, where I took out my period cup and it leaked all over the pants that I was wearing that day. So same conference, same same everything, just doing it again. So it's, it's a busy summer. It definitely is a busy summer. I'm also trying to plan out live streams and I'm looking at StreamYard to do it so that way potentially I could stream on Facebook as well. Um, so I'll, I'm looking into it, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do, if maybe there's a better platform, but I kinda really like StreamYard at this moment in time, so we'll see. Um, I also just have to find a good day to do it and potentially a moderator or two if I'm not gonna have Zach with me, I don't know. But I really do wanna live stream, so um, I'm just trying to figure out the details of that while also balancing all the other things. Anyways, I'm looking at my um, my screen and it looks a little dark in here and I wanna make sure you guys can actually hear me because I'm just using my regular mic. So I am going to move over to the film hallway so we can talk a little bit about why I chose basically permanent incontinence. Okay, I think that I have everything set up. I think my mic is good to go. Let's hope that it is. Um, but yeah, so I get a lot of questions about whether or not I would get my ostomy reversed or if I would go for one of the other options. And the thing about my ostomy is, as of 2019, I am no longer eligible for a reversal. I once had a temporary ostomy. It is no longer considered that. I wanted to share a little bit about what reversal surgery can look like, um, why people might choose a J pouch or a K pouch or BCIR, and why at this point in time, I have chosen to do none of those. So like I said, originally my ostomy was deemed temporary. That was the whole idea of it. I was only supposed to have it for six months to a year, and then once I had given my colon and my rectum time to heal, I was supposed to go back, get reversal surgery, and go on my merry way. Reversal surgery for me at that point in time would have looked like I was only missing a small amount of my small intestine, a small amount of my colon, but essentially, anatomically, I would have been almost the same as regular old people walking around with their colons and rectums. This can be done for a number of different reasons, but in my case, 
I have Crohn's disease, had it pretty bad in my colon and rectum, and they will often do this to kind of give you a break. So that way there's not food going through it, it's not as active as it was, and it's supposed to let it heal. As I found out, that really didn't work out for me because there are some complications that you can get when your colon's not doing any work. But yes, for me, it was Crohn's disease. The only other issue I had was a severe stricture or a narrowing caused by basically severe inflammation, so much inflammation that it scarred off. And scar tissue is a lot harder than regular tissue. If you have any scars, feel them. They feel kind of knotty and they feel like tough. That's exactly what happened in my rectum. And if any of you are ever interested, I actually did post a video a few years back where I showed my scopes that showed the stricture that I talk about. So I'm gonna link that video in the description here, but it shows you how tiny it was. And I think I even have in that video um, the actual measurement of how wide my stricture was able to be dilated to. This stricture was essentially why the ostomy had to be done and why I never got rid of it. At first, Having an ostomy seems like a really terrible thing. Um, if you're just looking at it, like surface looking at it, it's, it's your intestine hanging out of your abdomen and you have to wear a bag on yourself 24 seven, 365, you don't get any breaks and it collects your waste. If you're, just, if you're just looking at that, that doesn't sound super great. I was supposed to have this ostomy for only a few months and every time I went back to my surgeon, I was begging him, you know, how long, how long until we can reverse it? Until I kind of stopped asking because A, it didn't really seem like we were heading that way. There was a lot of concern over that stricture, especially since it caused my intestines to burst open uh, once already. But also because I realized that I was feeling better. And it's not just, it wasn't just me feeling better. It wasn't just, Oh, I'm able to eat and now I can enjoy foods. I'm not searching for bathrooms every five seconds. Um, I don't feel bloated all the time. I don't feel nauseated all the time. I'm actually gaining weight for once in my life and I can go to the bathroom without having pain. You know, there's, there's no pain associated with it. It was not all of that that I think really convinced me to keep the ostomy. Um, the worst symptom that I had prior to ostomy surgery because of Crohn's disease, because of the stricture that I had, and also because I, I much later, in 2019, I found out that I had a fistula um, that was not discovered until it had already healed up. I had a lot of leaking from my rectum and I had absolutely no control over it. It was 100% the most devastating symptom to me, especially as a teenager. It felt like the thing that was holding me back the most, everything else I could handle, I could handle being underweight, I could handle feeling terrible all the time. I couldn't handle that. That's what sent me over the edge. And even though, you know, this ostomy was like a surprise surgery to me, I didn't really expect it to happen at that point in my life. Um, it was the control that, even though it seems like you've lost control of your bowels, it felt like I gained it for the first time in years because I really didn't have a whole lot of control. It was, it was really rough. It was really horrible. <laughs> so when, when people describe it, and this is, this is what it is, people describe it as an incontinent stoma. That's exactly what it is. You have no control over when your stoma is going to be active and when you'll have output. It was a heck of a lot more control to me than a rectum that just kind of did what it wanted because it was so damaged down there. And I, I like look back and didn't even realize at the time how permanently damaged it already was. And it's really unfortunate that as a, as a teenager, that scar tissue had set in so dang fast that it was irreversible. And I think we all were just kind of hoping that it wasn't. <laughs> but it was. I mean, it just, the ostomy gave me a lot of freedom. I was going through, you know, rectal dilation procedures. This was a procedure done under anesthesia. I would get this done every three to four months from the age of, I probably started, I think I started when I was a freshman in high school. 
Um, and then that continued till I got my ostomy. So, so I guess like two and a half, three years I was going through that. Um, but essentially what they do is they knock you out and they would give me, you know, heavy drugs that I would take a day or two to recover from. I would have to miss a couple days of school. It was going to the hospital, getting checked into the OR, being knocked out, and then having them use a balloon dilator. So it's this little, um, I actually haven't seen it other than in photos, but it's kind of like a little scopey tube looking thing. And on the end is a balloon that blows up when it's in your rectum. Um, and then I would wake up from the procedure. I always had a really awful nausea after anesthesia, so I would be throwing up the rest of the day. And uh, I would also have a lot of pain because having scar tissue ripped open in your rectum and your anus is really not a fun thing to go through. <laughs> and I would bleed, I would bleed for a few days, but it would help my symptoms um, for a couple months and I would start to notice when the stricture was tightening again. And I even had this issue after ostomy surgery where the stricture kept closing on itself and my colon kept filling up with mucus. I actually wound up in the hospital one time post ostomy surgery. It was my senior year of high school. Uh, my colon filled up with 800 milliliters of this mucus, but I couldn't get rid of it. And what wound up happening was because my colon filled up so big, it blocked off my small intestine. So my ileostomy stopped working. It like gave me a blockage. So had the dilation procedure that they didn't really think about me still needing because of the ostomy. They did the dilation, emptied the 800 milliliters of fluid, and suddenly my ostomy worked again. So they're like, oh shoot, we should probably keep doing this. Before, before my surgery though, I was told to do the rectal dilations awake at home too, in between my procedures in the OR, just to try to keep it open, but they were so painful. And that was another, that was kind of a struggle because it didn't really seem like anybody believed me about how painful it was. I was like, can we get some lidocaine lubricant or something up there? No, I just had to do it straight and it, I was almost never successful. It was just too painful. And I was using the tiniest dilators and they were metal and just, it was not a good time. So yes, I started to really view the ostomy as freedom as freedom from this just awful rectum. Now, I get this question a lot too, and some of you may be wondering about this if you've heard of J-pouch surgery. J-pouch surgery is actually really super interesting if you look into it and you see pictures of it. It looks a little bit like Frankenstein-y. Um, same thing with BCIR and the K-pouch. But essentially with J-pouch, they remove the colon and rectum and they create sort of a makeshift rectum out of the end of your small intestine. It, it creates this internal pouch that you are then hooked up, it goes straight to your anus, and you kind of work normally, but also not normally. It's kind of like my output as someone with an ileostomy, you know, it's looser because I don't have a colon to absorb fluid, except you have to actually go to the bathroom and you have to wipe and you have to, you know, you have urgency and stuff like that, that's, that's there. I always tell you guys that I made the decision in 2019 to remove my colon and rectum, but that doesn't mean that I could have had J-pouch surgery. And the reason for this is that the sphincter, the anus, got involved. You need that for J-pouch surgery. You still gotta have a work in one of those for J-pouch surgery. And unfortunately, if you were, if I was to show you a picture of it, I've got pictures. I had to, I had to have evidence for myself. It did not look normal from the outside. I had external pain. Um, you could see scar tissue from the outside. It was red, it was angry, and it, it didn't do its job. It didn't keep anything in. It was, it was damaged. I don't even think if I went to a surgeon uh, prior to having that proctocolectomy, I don't even think I could have gotten a surgeon to perform J-pouch surgery on me. I think, it, it just, it would have failed. It would have failed. I wouldn't have been continent and I would have been miserable and I would have probably immediately said, just put the ostomy back because I 
did not do well without control over my bowels. I don't think anybody does. I, I don't think anybody really seeks that, but um, I really just, that was the biggest thing to me. That was the most humiliating symptom that I had, and I didn't want to ever be like that again. There are, however, in my circumstance as a patient without an anus anymore, uh, there are options for me should I really just get irritated with my stoma and not want to have an ostomy bag anymore. There are risks to them, but there are also benefits, and a couple of those options are called the K-POW and the BCIR. I know that there are a few of you in my comments who have commented before that you have gotten the BCIR surgery. There really isn't there aren't a lot of people talking about it online, but when I heard of it, I actually went to a seminar with my dad. I was probably, um, I think I had met Zach at that point, so I think I was probably 20 or 21 years old. It was a seminar, I believe in Baltimore, where they brought in patients who were living successfully with a BCIR surgery. They explained exactly how it would go. It was actually the hospital that performed it, and I wanna say it's it's the hospital that's in Pasadena, Florida. Is that even a place? I don't know, it's in Florida, I know that. Uh, there's only a few hospitals that perform it, at least at the time. But they came out, they had this whole regimen of how many days that you would stay in the hospital. Um, they would, do the surgery, they would help you through recovery, and it was honestly like, it felt so organized, and I feel like a lot of healthcare lacks that. This was such a nice schedule, and you could clearly see how you were going to go through it, and they gave you a lot of time too. It wasn't like, we're gonna force you into the hospital and out in like three days. I'm going to describe this horribly, and I might be off a little bit on how the BCIR works. Essentially, if you can picture an internal pouch with a portion like a stoma that goes outside, not a stoma like I have, but just kind of like a hole in your belly. Um, if you picture that, and then also picture that the intestine that leads into that pouch actually wraps around the exit for the stoma. I'm explaining this horribly and pictures would do a lot more justice than me saying it. Essentially the idea was as the pouch fills up, it kind of goes back into this small intestine that wraps around the opening and blocks it off. So as the pouch fills, you're not leaking stool out of this little hole in your belly. Honestly, I don't know how people come up with these ideas, but it's amazing. And you would catheterize yourself to empty the pouch. And I believe that people were saying they did it maybe a couple times a day. You BCIR patients can tell a lot better than I can. But I met a girl that had one and she told me all about it and she showed me the little hole in her stomach and how she just wore a Band-Aid over it. That was it. No bag, no nothing. I was, I was like, that's amazing. Um, but she also talked about how she had to battle pouchitis, which is something that can happen with J pouches, but can also happen with these other internal pouches. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, I just really don't want to mess with success. Also, it's another surgery. It's not a guarantee, like that this is going to work for me. And I really just didn't wanna have long-term issues with pouchitis and inflammation of that pouch and potentially infections in it. It just, that kind of put me off of it. I feel like I live every day successfully with a stoma and even though there are other options out there for me where I don't necessarily have to have intestine hanging out or um, you know, a bag hanging on my side, I do well with it. I've also been living with it for 13 years now and switching up my routine just honestly sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm just used to how I'm living like this and I feel good. So I don't really want to mess with that, but who knows? Maybe down the line, I'll change my mind and wanna do something different, but at this point in time, I'm not interested. We all have to make this decision for ourselves with our surgeons to see, you know, the possible risks and benefits for us and, and what it's worth for you. Um, these surgeries just weren't worth it to me. Obviously, J pouch was out of the question, but the other two, you know, there's still options, but I don't want them. I don't want them at this time. And maybe you do, and that's perfectly fine. Every single patient is different. Just because my story looks one way, 
Yours, you could have the same disease, same surgeries, and have just totally different outcomes, and that's okay. And just know that every day there are different companies working on different solutions. I know there's at least one company looking at a way for people with stomas like myself to have like a valve or something that blocks off the intestine so you kind of have somewhat of a control over it so it's not just leaking all the time and maybe you could go without an ostomy bag. For me, I know what it's like getting a slight blockage if I eat something that's a little too rough and the pressure that I feel internally on my stoma um, from not being able to have stuff pass through, it's painful. So I can't imagine something like purposely blocking it off, but I don't know. I, you know, I don't know the specifics. Um, you could definitely look it up and, uh, I don't think anything is approved yet. I don't, I'm not aware that it's being done yet, but maybe I'm wrong. I have no idea. So something to keep your eyes out on if you're, if you're living with a stoma and you're just, interested in other options. So there are options out there and just make sure you're talking to your surgeon about them. Anyways guys, I blabbered on longer than I meant. I, I usually do that. Um, I, I've gotten some comments and some emails about me talking too long and just, just got to the point. That's not what you're going to find on this channel. Um, yeah, I like to talk. That's kind of the point of YouTube, I think. I think TikTok's a better place if you want information fast or like uh, Instagram, but here, here we talk for long periods of time. <laughs> Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy this video. Let me know your thoughts about it. Um, let me know if you have different surgeries, if you've gone through J pouch surgery and what your experience is, or if you have a BCIR or a K pouch, or I think there's other pouches out there. There's other names for them, just basically depending on how the pouch looks internally. But yeah, let me know your experience and thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys very soon. Bye, guys.